like you know, we have the last paper, OP47, epidemiological and clinical characteristics of COVID-19 patients, the initial experience of Sri Lanka, presented by S.A. Hebagi, and the other joint authors are Indi Vikramasinghe, S. Jayakodi, C.A. Arambapula, N.S. Gunavadana, A. Vijay Vikrama, E.M. Narangoda, S. Dhanapala, A. Jayasinghe, and S. Prasapan. Thank you, Chair, sir. Good afternoon to all. Uh, so this presentation is uh, based on an interim analysis of an ongoing study on uh, clinical and epidemiological characteristics of uh, confirmed COVID-19 patients in Sri Lanka. Um, as we all know, the very first uh, local case was reported on uh, local case of COVID-19 was reported on uh, March 11th, and on the same day, the WHO declared the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, to be a pandemic. Um, during the initial phase of this uh, outbreak, our national response was based on evidence from other countries, but it was very important to study the virus behavior in our country and also the disease progression in our own patients uh, so that the, our national response can be suited more for our local context. So we designed this study um, to uh, evaluate the clinical and epidemiological characteristics of our COVID-19 patients who were admitted to a COVID-designated hospital uh, in Sri Lanka. So the, uh, we selected three hospitals uh, designated for COVID-19 care for our study setting, uh, National Institute of uh, Infectious Diseases, Columbus Base Hospital, as well as Base Hospital Valikanda. And uh, our inclusion criteria was the case definition indicated in the clinical management guideline by the Ministry of Health, which is a person with laboratory confirmation of COVID-19 infection, irrespective of their clinical signs and symptoms. So we collected data from the BHTs and investigation reports uh, following their discharge or death at the hospital. So this uh, presentation has the interim analysis of first 100 such patients. So uh, the mean uh, age of our sample was 40.7 years, and three quarters of our patients belong to the age group of 18 to 59 years. Two thirds of them were males. And then with regard to their exposure history, half of them gave a history of uh, recent foreign travel, and the others, were, uh, others had a contact history, either with a confirmed COVID-19 patient or a suspected patient. 43% uh, of them had other comorbidities, as you all can see, diabetes mellitus and hypertension were the commonest among them. A majority were symptomatic uh, at the diagnosis of COVID-19 by PCR testing. However, there were 24 patients who were asymptomatic. Out of them, 13 developed symptoms during their hospital stay, and 11 remained asymptomatic throughout. Fever was the commonest symptom, followed by dry cough and sore throat. When we consider the symptom combinations, uh, fever with um, dry cough was the commonest uh, symptom combination. Interestingly, fever with body aches or myalgia was the second commonest combination, followed by fever with sore throat. Uh, the clinical outcomes were classified according to the international classification of COVID-19 by the WHO. Majority of 92% of our patients had mild disease. Severe disease and critical disease was seen among 2% and 6% respectively. So 53% of them had uh, received hydroxychloroquine. Another quarter received hydroxychloroquine with antibiotic or an antiviral. And 5% uh, they had received and they were managed with antibiotics or antiviral without hydroxychloroquine. So uh, six out of these 100 patient, patients were admitted to ICU. One patient was ventilated and was later discharged. Five of them were ventilated, but all five uh, succumbed to the disease. Uh, the median duration of ICU care was uh, calculated to be 8.5 days. So within this group, the mortality was 6%, and all the deaths were among the males, uh, male um, gender. And there was no death reported in the uh, age group less than 18 years. When we consider the critical disease category, there were six patients, and all six of them died, giving a mortality rate for that particular category 100%. Uh, only one patient did not have any comorbidities out of these six died. Others, uh, all other five patients had um, one or more comorbidity. So in comparison with other countries, our clinical uh, profile, uh, the sex composition was similar to other countries, but our patients highlighted a more younger age structure. And uh, uh, the clinical presentation was similar, but the uh, mild symptom proportion was very high among our patients. 
Um, one in 20 patients from this sample needed ICU care with a median duration of 8.5 days. So we recommend continuous uh, local evidence generation through uh, research and also use of this uh, local evidence to guide our national policy to manage this COVID-19 outbreak. The limitations in our um, study were uh, we coll retrospectively collected uh, data from BHTs and investigation reports, so the reporting was not uniform. The BHT entries were not uniform uh, through the um, um, three hospitals, and also some in, uh, valuable information on sm uh, tobacco smoking and alcohol were missing, so we could not do, do any analysis on that. And also, uh, we focused uh, on the um, said uh, three hospitals, and uh, there was one death at the BH Nigambo, which was not included in this analysis because it was not one of our study settings. Thank you. Thank you very much. You finish bang on time. <laughs> Questions? Discussion? Sample, many deaths were young. So and then you said that your conclusion is that you recommend make decisions based on these findings. Yes. So do you expect our government to make decisions based on that they would only die, young would die? And why do you think that the old, I mean, the, when, when you're all Europe and American patients, I mean, when old were dying, why didn't uh, that happen in Sri Lanka? Uh, Madam, basically that was because of our case isolation and uh, hospital admission policy. Whenever we detected a patient through PCR testing, we, uh, the admission to a hospital was a mandatory, mandatory according to our national policy. And all their contacts were traced up to three levels and all of them were quarantined, either at a quarantine center or they were advised to self-quarantine at homes. So that limited our um, disease um, uh, spread uh, to a major extent. So uh, the disease uh, spread to el our elderly population was very much limited, unlike in other countries. So um, uh, that was the main reason why our age structure was limited, and also uh, the most of them were foreign return returnees from foreign countries. Uh, so those are those were the main reasons. So why didn't you extend to further? We, we are doing, this is a, um, a study uh, still carrying on, sir. This is the interim analysis on uh, the first 100 patients. I thought the cl clusters what we are analyzing is quite different from the Western figures where it is not clusters. So that is one of the reasons why you get younger patients and... Uh, uh, in this first 100 cases, uh, the cluster, the date correlated with the uh, with uh, April 19th. By then, clusters had not occurred. All these patients, all these 100 patients were from, like, either returnees from, um, uh, or uh, their contacts. Anything more? No? Well... We have now come to the end of the session, so I would like to thank all the speakers who kept very much to time. Five minutes is difficult to make a presentation in five minutes. Um, we must thank the timekeeper as well, who did sterling service holding up the board. Um, the judges we will have to thank eventually, and also the IT people who were responsible for in this. Thank you very much, everyone.